Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we were taking a look at how to make these functions to better organize our code and make it easier to expand. You can already see, rather than having one huge long program that's just doing a bunch, we've started dividing it up into these functions and it makes it a little bit easier to manage, easier to see what's going on. And now, as you can see, we're down here in our starting game interface. We're printing out a lot of values. And so before I get into more control structures that, you know, later in this lecture, we're going to really look at the while loops. I'm going to show you some string formatting options that are going to make it a little bit better than formatting than just using this concatenation. Now, a little bit older method, it's still very viable, but it's probably not going to be the recommended way, you know, in the future. But I think you should know it because you're going to see it in code a lot that we can replace this firm name in here a little cleaner by using a percent %s here, and that is for string, and then come in here and replacing this with a parentheses. So we're, we're not doing the concatenation. We're not adding on anything. Python knows that when it sees this percent %s to take whatever's after this percent sign and stick it in there. And so let's we can do the same thing down here with cache equals um, and I probably should use a consistent thing. So I'd say cash colon percent. And we'll use a D for digit here. And in this case, we can get rid of this string. And so that's a nice uh, upside here is that we don't need, it'll automatically do the conversion for us. And so I'm going to just fix this right here like that. And there we go. And we'll do the same for the cannons. So percent %d and a percent and no can string on the cannon. So there we go, just like that. And it's one of those cases where it's going to look the same. Oops, I have an error. OK, what did I do wrong? I messed something up. The debugged adapter. I'm not sure what that's about. That might not have anything to do with this. Nah, that was strange. Okay. Didn't have anything to do with my code. Run game. One. And there it is. So we didn't change anything. Now, one of the things that we're going to do also right now, and, and to, uh, I should have done it before. I wanted to make sure I got all these control structures out of the way and the, the, the functions. But one of the things is we don't want to have to keep entering in this firm name and all this. So what we could do to short circuit this is just leave the function in place, but just return back test firm, for example, testing firm. So, so that we're not asking this every time. We want to keep our development cycles fast, so we don't want to keep asking the same questions over and over. And the same thing is going to be here with our starting options. We don't want to keep asking this. So let's, in this case, since we don't want to rewrite this, we'll just come in here and set starting options equals to 1, just like that. So we can fix and revert this back and turn the, the inputs back on again. But now, see, at least when we're running this, and it comes right into the game. We're always going to assume the same firm name. We're always going to assume, for now, that we're going to start with cash and a debt. We'll worry about starting with cannons later. And that's much further into the game design as, as we're building it out to worry about those things. Just a good development tip is always make sure your development cycles are fast. I would have done it much more quickly if I was actually building this game like for, for a commercial project rather than a course. So... We're starting to, to spit some information out here. We could do another game divider. That's another nice thing about here, just so it, it looks a little better. Now, there's another format option that you should be aware of. And that instead of having this format, we can actually do a format like this. So we would take, and instead of having it with a percent there, we can use these braces and come in here and do dot .format and then send along what our variable is here. And it's going to plug it in like that. So let's see how that looks. Run it. And we'll be glad we don't have to take the input. And notice how there it is. It looks just fine, just like it is there. So you can see that's this is probably the, for, the preferred way, because you can get uh, fancy in here and put in all kinds of different formattings. If you search for like Python string format cookbook, just type that in, Python string format cookbook in Google 
it will give you all kinds of different formatting options in here that you can use to get the string to look like you want. Like for example, if we wanted to have commas, like if the cache got really high, I can come in here and say comma, and I think that's all I have to do is just put in that comma like that. And then if I change the cache up here to say a really high number, and we'll run this. Notice how we got the comma in there automatically. It automatically formatted it with the comma, and that's because it's smart enough to know when it sees this comma in the format down here to, to separate the thousands with commas. So pretty slick stuff like that. Now there is even one more way to do f string formatting, and this is like really new. You have to have Python 3.6 or above. It's called string interpolation sometimes. Some people call them f-strings. And so we could do this like this. We put f in front of the string. Seems kind of strange, but that's all you have to do. And then you can just put in the brackets here any Python function you want. In this case, we can just put debt like that. And then the end quote, double quote. So you still have the end double quote. But when it sees this f, it knows that anything inside of these things that you're going to format. So let's run it again. And you'll see that we still get the format we want. It looks just like we want. It's just a different way of doing it. So right there you have three completely different methods that you can use aside from the concatenation that we did with just the plus sign. So that's really four methods if you count the uh, just adding the plus sign and, and putting the strings together. So that's a, a worth going over. I wanted you to have all those. I will probably bounce back and forth with them. I'm not going to worry about making everything look so pretty. I'm more worried about structure and architecture, you know, design patterns. But use these formats to make your output look the way you want. All right. So now let's go ahead and build our game loop. Now we're going to want to show this game interface every time we do something. So for example, if we go from one city to another, we leave one city and go to the other city, we're going to need to refresh the screen. When we, after we buy and do some kind of transaction, we're going to want to refresh the screen. So our game is going to run around this interface. And common in these very basic, simple kind of game architectures is a while loop to form the main loop for our game. So we're actually going to come in here and have a while. And we use true here, and this is a boolean value that can, and you can see it says bool for boolean. This means it's going to be either true or false. And we're hard coding it true, meaning that this is always going to happen. And then we just have to select it all and tab in to get it in the indentation. Remember, Python indentation, very, very, very important. Now let's go ahead now after we show our information. We're going to have a lot of other information here too, like we're going to have the city we're in. And what I might do is put like uh, current city. And so this is the variable name we will use. And I'm just using that so I know that I don't want to come in here and say, you know, Hong Kong is my example because then I won't really know that I have to implement that yet. So I use, you know, the variable name I plan to use there, but just hard code it for now. And we're also going to probably want the date at some point. But you get the idea. We'll have other information up here, and we'll list products as well too that uh, are for sale in that city. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna skip that, and we're just gonna say, "What is your choice?" Menu. How about we just say menu? That's, and it'll be L to leave the city. Let's see, leave city or port. How about we say leave port? We can have B to buy. S to sell, T to transfer to the bank, and then where's some of the other options? Uh, visit the money lender, right? If we didn't want to check it, but we could have other options to fix the boat. And then of course we want to quit. And this is the one that we definitely want to get implemented in this lecture. So we already know a little bit about the if command. So what we can do is set up a little bit of what I would call some stub functions here. And stub functions are going to let us basically and you know see what we're, you know, lay out the architecture of our game. So let's do our input here. What is your option? And so we have to have our menu option here to get our menu option into that. What is your option? 
and we can say if menu option, remember we want double equals quotes L colon, we want to leave port. So let's go ahead and say leave port, and we're gonna call a function to leave port. Else if, now we learned about the else, and that was just if one thing or the other, but we can also do an else if, which means we'll check for another item. So we'll say menu option equals buy. We're gonna have a buy that we'll call. And then if we have menu option S for sell. And we'll just skip over the money lender for now and instead do the quit. Now for the quit, we're gonna do something a little different. I missed that colon there. For the quit, we're going to actually quit the game. And the way we can do that is there, this while is going to keep going no matter what, as long as this condition is true. So we could say, for example, while still playing and have a, a, a variable or check something else. But we'll just keep it like this for now because it'll work just fine. And instead, we can get out of this loop by doing a break. So while is true is going to keep going and going and going. We'll leave the port. We'll buy things. We'll sell things. We can do all these things, but as soon as we hit Q, we're going to break and quit the game uh, and fall out of that loop. So let's see how that's going to work. Now we need to create these three methods. So but that's what I meant by stub methods. I'm just going to go ahead and say div leave um, port like that. And we can put a pass in there. And that's how we can actually create a method that doesn't do anything. And we'll have a buy one the same way. And what I would maybe do is actually just put a print statement in there so that you know it got called. So we'll do that with one uh, with, with a few of them as well. So print, what do you want to sell? And we'll put an input here. And actually, I should just make that an input. That's just as easy. So we'll... We're going to ask what they want to sell. We'll query them for that here. And I'll do the same here. So the leave port, we'll just leave a pass just so you can see how that works. And for the buy and sell, we're using just simple, I call them stub functions. You just put them in place to get the architecture of the game going. So you can see we've, we're filling stuff in. We got our menu here. Let's say we want to buy. And it'll say, what do you want to buy? Doesn't matter what we put in, remember. But notice it just loops back, isn't that neat? And now if we wanna sell, I can say, what do you wanna sell? You'd pick something and it loops back. Uh, leave port doesn't do anything because it's just got the past in there. But what happens when we do the quit, the Q says pressing key to continue and we've quit the game. So just like that, we've set up, we learned about strings. That's the most important thing in this lecture that we started out with. We learned about how we could do several different types of options. You could do a whole course practically on all the different options of string formatting. So I'm not going much deeper than that, but that gives you kind of an overview of those. And then I showed you how to do a while loop here so that we can continue looping. It's a very important control structure. Uh, I'm going to do this for you uh, real quick. Game running equals true. So we can do this, like that, while game running. And then instead of a break here, we just say false and test that. So I'm showing you two ways. I want you to really understand the while loop. So before we end the lecture, there you go. There's one more way to do it. So the game's running. We can buy, sell, and quit. And it works just the same as having the true there. We're just using a variable instead. And there's nothing wrong with this way of doing it. But I did want to show you the break as well. With that being done, we're going to keep moving along. And in our next lecture, we're going to get into cities. And we're going to actually start representing series, uh, cities using a dictionary, which will give us a chance to learn a new structure that we won't use for a long time in this course. But at least you, you'll understand dictionaries. And that's going to make it a lot more fun because we can actually leave our home port and actually go between cities hopefully by the end of the next lecture. So hope you're having fun. We're trying to move pretty quick, trying to cover everything at the same time. So thanks for watching. See you next lecture.